Oh gosh! Oh, that's a big fish. Look at that sucker right there, guys. Yep. Hey guys, welcome back. Today, all we're talking about is sheep's head. It is that time of the year, and so I want to share some tips with you guys, some things that I know about catching these tasty, wonderful fish. So, as you can see over here, they look a little weird. They got these big teeth and uh, all that, but you know what? These things taste good and they fight really hard. They're just fun to catch. Now, the one thing is a lot of people say that they're difficult to catch. And at times, they can be. They can be pretty frustrating. But I tell you what, I'm going to give you guys some tips. That way, it'll help you get more sheep's head in the boat on your upcoming trips. All right, so let's get busy. All right, guys, so as we go through this, I'm going to be showing you some clips of fish that I've actually caught, some tips that I've actually learned. I'm not just talking about it. I'm actually gonna show you what I've actually done. So let's talk about a couple of things first. So what do they eat? The sheep's head diet mainly consists of crustaceans, whether it's shrimp, crabs, and there's just a multitude of crabs. You have fiddler crabs, mangrove crabs. You can also catch those yourself. So as far as fiddler crabs, you can actually catch those at low tide. And as you can see in this clip, it's pretty easy to do. The thing is, you have to wait till low tide, you have to wait for the sand to dry, and then these crabs will actually come out and they're milling around in the sand to grab something to eat. And it's a good opportunity for you to go out and catch free bait. Mangrove crabs is another uh, good bait for sheep's head. And you can catch these, like it says, around mangroves. Anytime that there's any type of mangroves, trees, docks, barges, different things like that, these mangrove crabs, as you see, will be crawling all over the place. And it's another great way uh, to actually get free bait. And I've caught these several times. I've done a couple of videos where I just don't take any bait out. I just go out and catch these things, throw them on a hook, and I, I'm pulling in some pretty decent sized sheep's head. And uh, if you just wanna go catch some to catch some food, heck, they're right there and you can grab them and you can bring home a meal. You can also use oysters. Now, I would advise you to make sure that you check your local listings, FWC, to make sure you can harvest them. Now, you can also buy oysters. My buddy John has done a great video. Um, I'm gonna put it in the description of where you can actually use store-bought oysters and um, use those for bait. You can also harvest them off of pilings and sometimes you'll see these green mussels that are on there as well and you can use those you take them you scoop them out you put them on a hook drop them down and bam you get a sheep's head so you can also use barnacles off of pilings and what you can do is you can grab some of the barnacles and you can just put a barnacle on your hook you can drop it down and the fish will actually eat that because what sheep's head do, they go and they bite on the pilings, the barnacles, the growth that's on the pilings and inside of there are the barnacles. That's why you see these big teeth on these things and they'll tear that, they'll tear that stuff up. You can actually use the barnacles, drop it on a hook and drop it down there and catch you some fish. And then oftentimes, what you can do to get those fish really fired up is to scrape some of those barnacles and those, um, that growth off of the pilings or the docks, wherever you're at. You can't do it on residential docks. That's one thing you can't do. But on those pilings um, and those bridges, scrape those barnacles, let it sit for a little bit. Um, and sometimes that'll fire them up. Or what you can also do is scrape it and then have a crab ready or whatever bait that you're using and drop it down. And a lot of times you'll be rewarded with a big old sheeper because those barnacles and those, um, the growth that's on there will really fire those fish up and get them to chewing as well. Now I'm gonna tell you, while you're sheep's head fishing, you just don't know what you're gonna catch. Now be aware, if you're using shrimp, everything eats shrimp. 
So you can catch a multitude of fish. If you're using crabs, there's still quite a few species that eat crabs. You can catch redfish, you can catch snook, you can catch snapper, and then you can catch these big old black drum as well on crabs. You can even catch these on artificial lures. And I've done that a couple of times. I've taken them out and I've used um, artificial crabs before. I've used artificial shrimp and I've caught sheep's head on both just using these. So you can catch sheep's head on a multitude of things, whether they're live bait or artificial. So the next point I wanna talk about is where do you find sheep's head? Anytime that you see structure, especially structure sticking out of the water, um, that's where you can target. Those are easy to find. So whether it's bridges, pilings, boat docks, whether it's commercial docks, or whether it's residential docks, you can find sheep's head anywhere um, as long as there's structure. You can also find them on rock pilings. So there's been plenty of times that I've been cruising along uh, along some rocks and I see sheep's head uh, congregating and they're looking for shrimp and uh, other crabs. Now, I've also been plenty of times out and I'm on flats and I've seen sheep's head. So you can catch them out there as well. So one of the things you have to keep in mind is that there has to be some type of current flow when you're fishing uh, for sheep's head. You can catch them at slack tide, but it is definitely more beneficial and more effective when you're actually fishing when the current is moving, whether it's an incoming tide or outgoing tide. There's been debates uh, between me and my buddies on which is the best uh, tide cycle to actually catch these on. And I've caught them on both, but I've caught them on incoming tides and I've definitely caught them on outgoing tides. It just depends on the time of um, the day as well and the water temperature. Usually when the water is a lot cooler, like this time of the year, that's when the sheep's head, are, the bigger sheep's head are starting to come in. You're starting to see bigger sheep's head this time of the year because the water's cooler. All right guys, so let's talk about tackle. What do I use when I'm out fishing? So I have a couple of different setups and it just depends on where I'm fishing. If I'm fishing really tight to structure and there's a possibility, like if I'm underneath a bridge or underneath of docks and different things like that, I'm gonna use my shorter uh, toadfish rod, which is called the convict rod. It's a five foot 11 uh, toadfish rod. And that's what I typically use because it is shorter. And so when I'm making those hook sets, I'm not hitting the top of whatever the structure is I'm under. Now it has uh, plenty of backbone. Like I said, it's a medium, uh, extra fast tip. And so it is super sensitive. I typically run braid on all my setups and it's usually between 15 and 20 pound braid. And then my leader, it's either a mono or um, a fluorocarbon leader. And it just depends on uh, the clarity of the water. If the water is super clear, like it is a lot of times here in Tampa Bay, I'm going to start off with 20 pound tests. I don't go anything lower than 20 pounds. Now, if the water is a little bit, um, murkier or if the current is moving really fast or if the third possibility i'm getting broke off i'm going to step it up to possibly 30 pound test i typically don't go over 30 i should at times it just depends you know i've been broke off on 30 pound test before so it's just angler preference and so my other setup i typically use a medium weight rod uh, but this one is a seven foot all the way up to a seven foot six um, medium rod, usually a fast or an extra fast tip. And then once again on those, I'm running the same braid uh, as I did on my other one. And then my reels for both of those are normally a 2,500 or a 3,000 size reel. That's really all I use for inshore. And they have enough um, capacity to hold the line that I need and they have enough drag for stopping power for whatever fish I'm fishing for. As far as my terminal tackle, it just depends, once again, where I'm fishing. If I'm fishing vertically and that water is, and I'm in you know, 10 to 20 some feet of water, I'm more than likely gonna have on um, a some type of jig, whether it's uh, my buddy's salt donkey jig or bottom sweeper jig. 
Um, those are the two typical ones that I use. There are a multitude of other um, sheep's head jigs that are out there, whether it's a swing jig, um, just different kinds. Those are the setups that I'll typically use for that. Now, if the water is not moving much, I will then at times um, go to just a straight hook, um, usually an octopus hook. Uh, and I've learned from the very first time I went sheep's head fishing, one of the guys at the bait shop told me, he said, go with a small hook. I didn't understand why he said it, but I understand now. So I use a size one, not a one knot, but a one hook um, when I'm especially fishing with uh, fiddler crabs. And the reason why is because the sheep's head have really hard mouths. And so that, that smaller hook um, hides the fiddler crab really well because sheep's head can be finicky. And, and if you use a bigger hook, a lot of times they'll see it. And so I'll use a smaller hook and then it still has that penetration power um, to get into the jaws or the, the lips of the sheep's head. So, and then depending on, like I said, the, the type of current, I may put a split shot on and I'm trying to go with the smallest split shot possible to allow the bait to fall a little bit more naturally. And then there are times that I just free line. I just put the, the hook on and I'll put on a crab, I'll toss it out there and let it float down naturally. Uh, it just depends on the way that the fish are reacting to the bait. And so um, most of the time, I'm, if I'm using just a regular hook, uh, an octopus hook, like I said, I'd normally use, I'm gonna uh, tie a polymer knot. I think those are really strong. They're really quick to tie and I don't have any issues with them breaking or anything like that. Now, if I'm using my bottom sweeper jigs or my salt donkey jigs, most of the time I'll use a loop knot. The reason why I use a loop knot, I want that bait, I want that thing to swing a little bit more um, naturally and it helps me get it out of structure as well um, whenever I get it stuck. So let's talk about bait presentation. Now that we have our tackle, we know where to fish, we know what bait to use. Let's talk about actually getting the bait in front of the fish. You want to make sure that your bait is close to the structure, whether it's the piling, the boat dock, whatever it is, you want it as close as possible to that structure to get the maximum opportunity for that fish to see your bait as it's going down. Many times you'll get bites um, when the crab is on the way down or whatever that bait that you're using is on the way down. And so if you are fishing on the bottom, whether you're using a jig or um, a fish finder rig, whatever you're using, and you're letting that line go down and all of a sudden it stops, like your line starts getting slack and you know you're on, not on the bottom, it's time to wind up and feel if you have something on there. More than likely that fish has picked that bait up as it's falling down. And so you wanna wind down, you wanna lift up a little bit, and if you feel any weight whatsoever, set the hook. Now, if you're getting hung up on something else on the structure, then that's okay. But you don't want to miss the opportunity to get a hook and a fish if he's got your bait on the way down. So now that you're letting your bait fall all the way down to the bottom, typically, um, this is what I do. I typically let my line all the way out. So I let the line go all the way out until it stops. And then when it does stop, I take a little bit of a wind and then I put my finger on it. And then I'm barely lifting up just until I can feel that the jig is barely on the ground. Because then I can feel every little movement, letting it sit for about 30, 40 seconds, sometimes to a minute. And the only reason why I have my finger on the, uh, the braid, it's just more sensitive to me I can feel every single little movement. Um, I do have a sensitive rod. This rod is sensitive, but I think I can feel more with my finger on than I can without it on. And I'm not putting much pressure on with my finger. I, I barely have it on. 
but it's just enough that I can feel, you know, everything that's going on. Everything is like real light. So I'm, I'm, I'm holding my, my rod real light. So in case something does hit hard, it, I have some shock absorbent to it. And so as you saw in that clip, I'm definitely, I don't have much pressure on that line whatsoever. And I'm, I have a lot of sensitivity on there and I can feel every movement of that bait that's in the water. Now, the other thing that you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to, especially if you're using um, a really light weight or no weight at all. Let's say if I am fishing away from the dock and I'm not vertically fishing, I'm gonna cast my bait. And so once again, that's where I'm using that hook and a really small split shot to get that bait to cast to wherever I need it to cast to. Now, a lot of times, um, you'll be able to see that line start moving to the side or away from you or something else, or you'll see slack get in your line. If that happens, more than likely, once again, that fish has picked that bait up and is now either swimming with it or they're chewing on it. Um, sheep's head are really funny. What they'll do as that bait comes down in front of them, a lot of times they'll just chomp on it and I've seen them just swim around and they'll go back and then pick that bait up, begin to eat it. And so sometimes you may feel a little movement on your line and then you don't feel anything. Just wait for a second. When you feel that thing again, if you feel any, if you pick up slightly and you feel any weight on your line, any weight whatsoever, that's when you need to set the hook. And I'm gonna be, I'm gonna tell you, you never know what size fish you're hooking into. It could be a, a six inch uh, sheep's head or it can be a 20 inch uh, sheep's head. And you just need to, the object is to get that fish away from the structure as fast as possible. If you have a pedal kayak um, and you have instant reverse, hats off to you because now you can get away from that structure and maneuver as much as possible. If you don't, it's still okay. Try to use whatever you have, whether it's a paddle, um, your hand on the piling or a dock, get away from that structure as much as possible. You wanna get that fish out away from any type of structure so he can't wrap you up. Sheep's head are really strong and they will wrap you up. They're smart. They will wrap you around pilings. They'll make runs into whatever. They're like a, almost like a grouper. They'll head straight for the structure because they know that that's where their safety is. All right, guys, so the last thing I wanna to talk to you about, and it's something every angler has to have, patience. You have to have a lot of patience because there's a lot of times that you can lose a lot of bait uh, out sheep's head fishing. You can go sometimes through five, six, seven crabs just to get one sheep's head because they, like I said, will just chomp on it, let it go, and you don't even know that they're there. But there are plenty of times that I've dropped them and caught fish back to back to back on crabs or shrimp. And so you just have to have a lot of patience and just try different things out. Watch videos. I have tons and tons of videos on sheep's head fishing. Um, you can see my buddy John. Um, he has done a lot of sheep's head fishing. My buddy JC of Rad Reeling Fishing, he has done plenty of sheep's head fishing. And so there are multitudes of people, uh, I, I don't mind, go out there and watch um, these videos just to become a better angler. That's what I had to do uh, when I first got started because I didn't know anything about saltwater fishing, but now I'm not an expert to say the least, but I have caught a ton of sheep's head uh, because for the first year when I was fishing, there was red tide and it was really bad. And that's all I was fishing for. I was fishing for nothing but sheep's head. And so I targeted sheep's head purposely for that entire year because I wanted to understand the fish, the patterns, the movements of the fish, how they bite, what to use. And so I've learned a lot, guys. And so I hope this video helped you guys. If it did, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. And if you've never subscribed before, I don't know what you're waiting on. 
come on, go ahead and subscribe and then share my channel with others so that way they can see the type of content I'm putting out. All right, guys, till next video, next week, remember God loves you, God bless you, may he keep you, peace.